All right, so I am uh, super excited today to be able to introduce you to Chris Sumners. Now, some of you, maybe many of you know who he is, um, but we have this opportunity to be able to sit down together to be able to talk about him. I want you to get to know him better, his heart better, uh, but also talk about men's ministry. So uh, Chris Sumners is the director of men's ministries. Um, I think as of, was it May? May, yes. Yeah, so around May, uh, he became the director. I asked him if he would. He um, accepted, and so I'm really, really excited to be serving the Lord with Chris and uh, hoping to really love and care for the men well at this church. And so I'm excited for you to hear his heart. Um, he is the right man for this role. Um, he loves the Lord. He has a huge heart for men and for what God can do uh, with the men in this church. And so I think you'll get a sense of that, a flavor of that as we um, chat and you're able to get to know him a little bit better. So um, let me go ahead and um, turn it over to you. And let's just start with some basic things like your family, just, you know, your wife, kids, um, ages, any of that stuff. Absolutely. I have a beautiful bride in Tammy. We've been uh, married for 32 years with raising three boys. Uh, my oldest is Colton. My middle is Jordan, and my youngest is Joshua. You kind of start to pick up a theme there at the, <laughs> at the end with those. And, um, and then blessed with four beautiful grandchildren at this stage in life, which the adage is, if I knew it was this much fun, I'd have had them first, and, uh, because it is just a wonderful stage of our life and very blessed to have a, yeah, that's great. a partner and, and a helpmate in Tammy. And uh, what God has done for our marriage and our family, I'm, I'm so appreciative and thankful for that. Yeah, that's great. As somebody who is just <laughs> starting to have grandkids, mm-hmm. we have one with one on the way. I chuckle when you say yeah, that because there, there is something to that. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, all right, so um, how about work? Uh, maybe give me a sense of, of what you have been doing vocationally all these years. Um, and I want to circle back around to that a little bit with some of that, some of the skills that you've developed there and the experience you have mm-hmm. will, I think, be a blessing to men's as well. Um, I'm adopted, as I've shared with you in the past, and I was adopted by a family in Plainview, Texas, born and raised in Plainview, and I was adopted by a farming family. Um, My adopted father passed away when I was 10, and um, at the time when we sold our farm, there wasn't going to be a kind of another farmer that raised, you know, Mm. that wasn't his son, Yeah. Um, and was driving down the street, and there was... um, an opening, uh, a new Dairy Queen was about to open. And I went in and applied for a job, and I got a job uh, cutting onions and mopping floors in the restaurant business. <laughs> and I've never left it. I've been in the restaurant business my whole life. Currently, I'm the, uh, a minority owner and CEO and president of a restaurant company that uh, franchises IHOPs uh, throughout 11 states. Um, been very fortunate to be a part of this industry. More so for just the amounts of people. I have over 6,000 employees, and I try to love every one of them. And, yeah. um, you know, it's been, an, it's been an amazing time. We've been in Arizona. We've raised our family here and growing this company for a little over 27 years. So I've been very yeah. blessed in this business of serving. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've seen that, you know, when we get together and mm-hmm. we have lunch at IHOP, which I always love, um, just to see how you treat the employees. It, you can tell there's a genuine, genuineness there and a care for whoever that person is, whatever their job is, whether they're a busser, a server, a manager, whatever the case might mm-hmm. be. And I, your, your um, character and your love for the Lord is evident in whatever scenario you're in, whatever context you're in. So, um, so as far as as far as um, this role of men's ministry, I'm going to circle back around in a okay. minute to kind of some of the w- transferable skills and experience I think will help build men's ministry as we move forward. But but when I asked you, I mean, you were let me, actually, let me clarify. So you were already um, functionally serving as sort of the men's director, um, even though it wasn't an official role. You were, um, for at least a few years, had been doing the breakfast. So maybe mm-hmm. start there. Tell me about how the breakfast started and what those few years were like until uh, you became the director. Um, a little over four and a half years Oh, has it been now. that long? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it... it um, and that was when, um, not the very beginning, when John became the pastor of this church, but it's pretty early on when, you know, a couple of hundred members. And we would meet, um, again, the second Saturday of each month uh, over in room 200 and, and um, you know, serve men. And then we were doing topical lessons at the time with, um, as I was explaining in the past, that 
you know, down the path of the men's needs, um, how are men attacked, the sin du jour for men, if you mm-hmm. will. And, um, you know, again, try to stay faithful there, working with the leadership as, the, the, as this church campus started to grow and trying to create the vision. And it was when, you know, you came on board that we really started to put some flesh around it and decide right. this is, if by God's grace and will, what do we do with the men on this campus and providing them a ministry that they can count on that honors God yeah. and, and holds to the mission of this church. And so, and then when you started the men's breakfast, um, obviously the church was quite a bit smaller, but how, how many men originally were coming? Anywhere from 15 to 30. You okay. know, 30, we were busting at the seams yeah. back then. It was pretty hot in that small room. Yeah. But, um, you know, again, a lot of those faithful men are still coming today. Amen. Because they saw the value in it, uh, how to connect. Yeah. And um, just, again, being faithful with the small that God gives you and hope that he blesses it in a much larger way you know, to his glory. So. And so you were, um, you know, uh, leading the, the monthly men's mm-hmm. breakfast. You were um, the primary teacher um, mm-hmm. on a month-to-month basis. Just tremendous faithfulness there in uh, loving these men um, month after month, just the relationships um, that you're developing. And, and obviously the church has grown, and so, you know, praise God, there's more men coming to the breakfast, and and so it's, it's trying to get to know all those men as well mm-hmm. over time. Um, and so when we... Um, began to walk together in men's ministry when God graciously gave me oversight of family ministries here. Um, you know, we, I, I'd known you from the past, mm-hmm. knew your character, knew your love for the Lord. It had been some years since we'd really connected. And so it was really a blessing for me to be able to connect again with you and uh, be able to kind of pick back up with your story that God is writing and how he's shaping you and where he's grown you and all of those things. So it was, that was really fun for me, really a blessing for me. And when we began to um, walk together with men's, we had talked about, well, hey, let's just be praying, you know, what God would have. And and over time, it became really, really clear for me, um, I I really, through, by him being very gracious to give me simple, easy wisdom of going, yeah, it's a (laughs) no-brainer. He he has been already using you and um, will continue to use you. And so when I asked you um, about being the director of men's ministry, uh, you were excited. You said yes. And so I would love um, for the men out there to be, and the church as a whole to be able to hear your heart for the men and, and really why were you excited to become the director of men's ministry? What, what was that about you that drew you to that role? Um, I'm a man in a church, <laughs> and I understand the need. You know, back to you and I, you know, connecting, and there was a period of time that we didn't see each other. Yeah. Um, but friends are friends forever when the Lord's the Lord of them. Amen. We know that, and and I love you dearly. And yeah. it and it's it's like we haven't missed a beat. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. That same passion for um, I know that when God saved me, and He provided men around me to grow me spiritually and to hold me accountable. Mm. Uh, I didn't realize at the time how valuable that was, but over time. I realize that there's nothing more important. And, and even as you grow through the sanctification process, you know, that we need each other. Yeah. But we're the first to want to bull through it by ourselves. And the world, the flesh, and the devil will destroy you. Yeah. And will continue. To, I don't care how long you've been at this, been a Christian. I don't care how faithful you've been. If there's a period of time that, that there's a, a, a desert part of your life, um, you're in trouble if you don't have that group, even and, and we look at our Lord, our Lord s- surrounded himself with twelve, but he had three, and we know that. Yeah, and he was very close into those three. So, I can't have a hundred perfect relationships with people, but I can be faithful with the one, two, or three that he puts in my life, and then we can duplicate that is by his design and what the Scripture calls us to do. Yeah. So when you approach me and we started discussing this even though it is in may if you remember we started this back in january so we didn't jump into this we right. prayed over this we yeah. talked about this yeah what does it look like and it was very exciting because i love a church and i believe in the church and the leadership of this church says men's ministry counts for something amen it, you know and again you've heard the 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 adage that how the men of the church go so go the church that is so true if you actually really follow that and you look at God's design in his word for what a man's supposed to be. 
And we live in a culture and a world that attacks that continually. It's the greatest marketing plan Satan could ever come up with. And it's effective. And we have to be careful. And so we do need each other, whether we admit it or not. It's, it's hard for us for, you know, for me to take my heart out of my chest and ask you to hold it and be careful because I'm not used to that. Hmm. But I've done that, and I understand the value of that. And I want all the men on this campus, all the men in, that we can come in contact with throughout Gilbert in our Judea, hmm. you know, where we're supposed to be, and, and exemplify that for each other, that we need each other in our lives because if you're not in the fight there's something wrong you know paul tells us in second timothy 4 that that he wants to that he wants to end his life fighting the good fight finishing the race keeping the faith and i i've told you before i want to go to heaven tired and worn out amen and i want the men of this church tired and worn out loving each other so that we can follow the mission of this church, which is, which is to know, love, and serve Jesus. That's the Great Commission. And that that impacts how we're married. That impacts how we raise our families, whether they're new, new babies or they're old sons. Mm. That impacts the personal relationships we have with each other. That impacts how we do our vocation in life. And that are we the light in the world that God calls us to be? And what is different about us? And it's Jesus. Yeah. And that's what I hope our program, men's ministry, when we, when you'll get into some of the pillars that we'll talk about. But, you know, this is the kickoff this year and I'm, this, this week, this Saturday, and I'm extremely excited. I've prayed many, many times, many, many months for this period coming, and my heart's racing, and I'm excited for it. I'm excited to kick it off. I'm excited that you'll give us the overview. This is your un, under your area of responsibility as a pastor in this church. I love that I report to you over this as a team, as a fellow brother, with the same goals that God would have us do. So there's, a, there's not a better time in my life right now. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I mean, if <clears throat> if I were to cut you, you would bleed love for Jesus, mm -hmm. certainly love for people, but a passion for men and what God might do in their life. And I, and I love that you get this chance to be able to share a bit of that heart, a bit of that passion. Um, one clarifying note, when this comes out, um, it will probably be after the men's breakfast. However, we are hoping and planning that it'll be recorded and posted. So if you want to go back and watch it, um, we're going to be talking about um, the, the heart of men's ministry, the why of men's ministry, where we're heading, what some of these pillars are going to be. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, so when you talk about the, the big picture, so as a director, you know, um, part of your role is to, to build teams, identify men um, that we're, we're going to train up, we're going to equip um, to be able to lead and, and hopefully connect relationally and, and in the Lord and with each other. Um, I want to talk about just, just briefly, what are some of the skills? I know what they are, but in terms of your vocation that God has really shaped in you, that will be a blessing as you're um, prayerfully seeking to build men's ministry and, and the teams and the, um, what God would do within it. You know, God has, has gifted me the ability to grow things. Again, you don't know that when you start. As I told you, I was 15 years old walking into a Dairy Queen. Yeah. And in my later stages of life, we've, you know, I've built over 100 and 150 restaurants in multiple states. Not bragging, I knew that the key to success of that is that who do you surround yourself with? Who do you identify as leaders? And can you give them a vision and a passion for the same thing that you have? Well, in this case, the vision and the passion is our Lord. What greater vision or passion that we need, what he calls us to do, is to go and make disciples, mm. teaching them everything about him. And that will change your life. So when we started talking about what elements could we introduce at the beginning stages, and who knows what God turns it into later, but obviously it was always a natural with the breakfast, because that's that easy going, get to know each other, to just meet you know guys that'll get up at seven o'clock on a on a Saturday morning on the second Saturday of once a month and, and come in and meet with each other we will sing together I mean and until you've heard a, a group of men singing at seven o'clock on a Saturday morning <laughs> you know that that is uh, that'll move your heart man. yeah amen. that is that is real yeah and then um, you know giving them a prepared lesson that we're taking straight from scripture line by line word by word not missing anything we're taking on everything that the Bible says at that day that we're dealing with that. And then we, we spend time 
talking with each other in our tables. We spend time praying. Another really cool thing is to listen to men, the, the, the heat of the room rise as men have bowed in verbalizing prayer mm. with each other. It's impactful and it's important and it's needed. And then moving from there, that you know, the need for discipleship groups, the need for not just a one and done, check the box, it's over, but can you get that three, four, five group of men in your life that you yeah. want to be entrusted with their hearts, that you can trust them with your hearts, you can meet to help each other to grow in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord. And again, how does that play out in our day-to-day living in every aspect from family to job? And then we move into mentoring. And I mean, there's a, and there's a difference that, you know, there's a need to mentor. You know, we've said before that everybody needs a Paul and a Timothy in their life, that continuing to help them grow specifically in some areas, depending upon is it drastic areas or minor areas? Is it long-term process or short-term process that we can help encourage people through that mentoring process to get them into the discipleship groups and, and um, you know, work with them from there. And then to know, to love, and to serve our Lord is um, acts of service. I mean, there's always needs in the church for the, the skills that we have, whether that's just lifting something, helping move, is that painting, is that electrical, is that plumbing, is that cutting grass, is that hanging drapes, what, whatever that is, that you know, we identify that men are on the ready to go and serve that person and prove out God's love for that person in their life, and it's a blessing for us. Yeah, that are doing that. So That's right. those are kind of the f- basic first four pillars that we're we're looking at, and we want to get men actively involved in that, signed up for that, trained for those areas, and uh, I'm excited to see that get kicked off. Yeah, and, and so through kind of prayer and discussion, not just you and me, but others, mm-hmm. um, you know, this is where we're at, holding loosely before the Lord. Like Father, we really believe these are some core elements of men's ministry. And so now, um, Father, will you help us to identify the men that can mentor, that can lead a men's discipleship group, um, you know, men that can serve at the breakfast, men that can do acts of service. Um, that's part of our hope is in this season that God will really help us to be able to not just identify, but equip mm-hmm. and train and prepare the men for what God would have them to do. And so it's pretty exciting, and we'll see what God does over time, um, obviously, this is where we're starting, and and our prayer is, you know, my prayer is certainly as we sit here, maybe a year from now, we're able to look back and go, all right, well, we had our plans, and and you know, God, here's what you've done, and we're super excited to see um, how faithful He is. And so, mm-hmm. um, well, I do want to um, thank you first of all for serving the men of this church. I, I mean it when I say sincerely. I, I don't think there's a better man for this role. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, there, there just isn't, and I'm so thankful. Not only has he reunited us, um, but Amen. he has blessed me as pastor overseeing family ministries with a director, with the faithfulness that you have, um, the, the the devotion to Christ, the, the uh, you know the, the deep longing to finish strong in the Lord, um, and and to, your passion to see men become like Christ, love Jesus more, love and serve their families, lead their families, lead in the church. And so I, I just, I'm super excited. I really can't wait to see over time what God does and how he's going to use you. And I just appreciate your humility, your dependence on Christ, your faithfulness, your love for him, and, and really our friendship. So very, very excited. Um, so um, our prayer is for you men that you will um, come to the men's breakfast. The men's website has now been posted. You can go check that out as well. There's ways for you to be able to um, learn more about what, what's going on and what's coming, to be able to um, either be served or to serve mm-hmm. in men's ministries. Um, and we hope that you'll be coming to the breakfast and these other things, and that's a great way for us to get to know you men. Um, so anyways, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. And uh, you'll have to do one of these again down the road, and we'll see what God's done. We'll introduce the 12 pillars next the 12, time. <laughs> yeah, the 12. <laughs> Maybe the 8. I don't know. Maybe the 6. We'll see. But uh, no, that'll be great. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks.